What's going on, y'all? My name is Tommy Holt. Welcome back to the channel. Back at it again for more... Ooh, I don't know if you guys heard that. That felt nice. Back at it again for more Wednesday afternoon worship. I know we talked about Arosny next, but I, uh... How could I forget... Tiger Hands? Yeah. But, cracking open Lost Omens Impossible Lands once again to talk about Kamidu. If you're liking or seeing like, subscribe, ding the bell. Stay caught up on all your stuff for now. Let's dive in. Okay, so we've talked about nature gods a lot over the years, but never have we really ever talked about, like, from where nature came. Erastal taught the people how to hunt, but, like, who made the animals for the hunting? Gosrael helped feed a man by teaching him how to fish, but where fish come from, right? The answer? Weird for the fish, but a tree. A tree somewhere in the multiverse, who knows where, known as Kalpavendi, from which everything that flies, crawls, slithers, or is otherwise a beast of the land sprung. It's also a very, very potent magical healing tree that can cure people of, like, anything, basically. A cradle of life that people have spent their whole lives trying to find, because why would you not, right? Primo hunting ground, fix your pre-existing conditions, all that good, good shit. But generally speaking, most people aren't coming back from those quests, or not on one piece if they do. That exception, of course, is the worshippers of Kamidu. She's the guardian of that tree, the mother of all of the things that crawl walk on their weird fucking tiger hands. She both will defend it and, like, by the same token, everything that crawls out from it from those who would seek to do them harm, and bring those who she deems worthy to that place to receive that healing. To pet the tanned tiger. <laughs> She's a deity in four parts, represented by all four faces of her aspect. You've got the, like, nurturing mother side, the wrathful, destructive thunder god side, the serene nature side, and the side that, uh, will get in your head and give you nightmares and do eldritch horror shenanigans to you if you piss her off or hurt her people. It's like four deities, all in one, four very distinct things, and that without a doubt, makes her the best bang for your buck if you're looking to become a cleric in the Impossible Lands. But mechanically, Kamidu is true neutral. Allowed alignments are neutral good, neutral, and neutral evil. Weird that there's not like a fourth one in there somewhere for the aspects, but go off. Her divine font is to harm or heal. Her divine ability is strength or constitution. Her divine skill is medicine. She provides access to the domains of healing, you know, that maternal aspect. Lightning, you know, nature, angie. Nature, you know, nature. And nightmares, you know, distinct from all. God. She provides access to the alternate domains of freedom as well. Clerics of Kamidu may prepare summon animal, lightning bolt, and moon frenzy. Her edicts are cause destruction when angered, destroy aberrant creatures and fiends, live free of social or materialistic chains, and to cause destruction when angered, anathema, harm a child, pollute the wilds, or refuse to treat an illness. Her favored weapon is the spear. Better in the hands of her followers, deadly simplicity be like. Worshippers of Kamidu who cast Avatar gain a speed of 50 feet, a fly speed of 70 feet. Where does the fly speed come from? It comes from game balance, I suppose. A spear melee attack with a reach of 15 feet that deals 6d10 plus 6 piercing. A call beast ranged attack, which deals 6d6 plus 3 slashing. That's hilarious to me. I just, where's that meme of the person calling Thanos or whatever the fuck? Tiger hands deal with my problems. And a lightning strike ranged attack, which does 6d6 plus 3 electricity. For when, like, the beasts leave you on hold. I suppose. It'd be like that. So, as much as I riff on it, I really like how Kamidu is so, like, broad. There are so many healing gods, nature gods, gods of the storm, gods of madness out there, but they're never, like, in one package. And that being in one package makes Kamidu feel just way more, like, human to me, right? You and I are capable of feeling lots and lots and lots and lots of different things, different emotions, having different special interests and stuff like that. 
not how the human experience works at its core, right? It's not like you're someone who made a YouTube channel about his special interests and like hyper fixated on it so he could turn it into a career or this is your special interest and so you're deep diving through a bunch of content about this game that you really, really like. No, it's weird. Who would do that? Not me, no. But from that, Kamidu's followers must then be in such a broad range because there's so much ground to cover. Her churches are so often places where animals are taken in, healed, rehomed, so on and so forth. Easy origin point for like a cleric who archetypes Beastmaster or even like Animal Order Druids who worship her, right? By that same token, her faith is all about pushing back violently when people do you wrong. Origin point for crusaders against like beings who would despoil nature, so on and so forth. Really, you could have four Comedian clerics in a party and they could look so different by playing around with their spell lists and archetyping into other casting classes and things to suit which of the four very different things that you were focusing on in your worship or, you know, not doing that because hyperfixation is bad. And why would you do that? No, just go very broad. Pick all of them. Prep, nightmare, call lightning, keel, and summon animal. Yeah, why not? You could have something like a, like a bard who's muses the deity, who's casting off the occult list, a cleric who travels to heal the sick, taking that piece of culpavendi they hope to see once and then providing that to others, the druid who is in the act of like rehoming an abused like tiger or some other apex predator that they have to watch and take care of and might also use to kill aberrations, but don't worry about it, and like a wizard, say, who was studying lightning as part of their evocation thesis. From that, you get so many different character concepts that they can fit like anywhere and trace back to the source, which I think is really cool. A lot of times, especially in like printed products like adventure paths and stuff, you're going to see the core deities or deities that fit a certain theme are going to be the deities who get the most support as time goes on. And so when books like these come out, oftentimes, unless they do like an impossible lands AP that's not Bloodlords, because there's just so much content, somebody like Kamido could very easily get buried under even more than just like, here are the core deities, inner sea region, hooray. Because this reach is so broad, you can have Kamidan worshippers in so many different parties, which gives this non-core deity a chance to crawl into the limelight more, and like, I'm really fucking here for that. Also, there's a whole tree that you could adventure to. Adventure sites are really cool. We've been talking about, like, stories to go find the sacred place or thing that would do the really cool thing to somebody since we've been telling stories. So of course, like, we're going to be talking about that present day in our tabletop role-playing games, right? It's like when Odin brought the runes home to humanity, but, like, you probably aren't losing an eye for this. Or, like, the Fountain of Youth, but now with 100% less colonialism, and we're fucking here for it. But now I'm rambling. What do y'all think? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments, especially if you're, like, the people who wrote this. Sometimes I don't reply to comments as fast as I could. Oh, this brain of mine. But I read everything, and I see when the people who are writing the content are in my comments being like, yeah, this came from this, 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 this. And this is all content, especially in like Lost Owens Impossible Lands that I have just never experienced in my whole life. So I think it's even fucking cooler. And also, I see y'all. Y'all are cool. For now though, down there, feed the algorithm. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next time.